My name is Amy Wright and I'm a student at Leeds Beckett University studying fashion marketing. I'm going to be talking about my own purchase behaviour and explaining why I make these purchases and relating them to several prominent marketing theories. What is marketing? Well, according to the Chartered Institute of Marketing, it recognises marketing as a management process as it is responsible for identifying, anticipating and satisfying customers while making a profit to help grow business. Neil Borden originally developed and came up with the concept of the marketing mix, now known as the four P's. As you can see in the diagram, they are known as product, place, price and promotion. Product, for example, is the offering of how it is meeting the customer's needs, looking at the appearance of the product, labelling and packaging, as well as promotion, thinking about how the product is advertised and promoted to target their audience in an effective eye-catching way. Another necessary aspect is marketing orientation, which is when a business recognises a customer's needs and wants and puts that into focus when designing a product, which increases sales within a business. Developing a market orientation makes organisations more profitable in both the long and short term. SWOT is another key feature in marketing. As you can see, SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, where strengths and weaknesses are internal and opportunities and threats are external. This is the first stage of planning, allowing the businesses to stay, to stay on track and up to date on these key marketing issues. It helps the business to know where to improve on looking at the weaknesses, which will help the business become more successful in the future. Also, recognising their competitors in their market to try and keep up with what is out there. Next, I'm going to be talking about my own purchase behaviour, including theories as to why I did so. Classical conditioning is a form of associative learning where your mind is intentionally trained to associate different behaviours or feelings with products or brands. There are many instances where advertisements, labels and packaging have influenced the consumer's decision to purchase without us even knowing in our unconscious mind. Like millions of us, I'm a reluctant loyal customer of Coca-Cola as this has been a drink of my choice, despite knowing how high the sugar levels are. They use the, cl the classical conditioning technique very well and in recent years their adverts have been directly about physical activities in environmental settings to create a sense of cravings when taking part in physical activities, thereby promoting their brand and making the public want to purchase their products. It is a very effective technique to persuade people to buy Coca-Cola, which gives the company an edge over competitors such as Pepsi. The next thing I'm going to talk about is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. As you can see from the diagram, it's made up of five sectors. If marketers know the needs and wants of the target audiences, then that is a good selling point. For example, each business will focus on a different sector. I recently bought a top from Urban Outfitters, and this theory would suggest it links in with the steam needs and belongingness needs, as it was for my birthday and was something I could live without, making it more of a want than a need. Whereas if I purchase a bottle of water, this theory would suggest it's more physiological needs, as it's a basic need that everyone needs to survive. The last theory that I'm going to be talking about is the buying process. Here I've shown the six stages of the process and an example where I've used the consumer buying process is when I was shopping in Covey's PC World for a laptop. The first step was me recognising my needs and wants, as my top preference would be an Apple Mac, which is recognised as a luxury brand. However, as this is a top end product, this was beyond my budget. The next stage was the information search, considering what is right for my own personal needs to gather some insight in what, in what is out there. The last three steps are about the purchase decision and the evaluation of the choices made weighing out the pros and cons of each purchase to figure out which is best suited for my needs. I narrowed my decision down to two of my favourite ones, then went home to spend a few days thinking about it, which I then deliberated on and then bought my preferred laptop. The final stage was the post-purchase evaluation. Overall, I was very satisfied and it suits my needs perfectly. This is the laptop that I finally purchased. Thank you for listening and I hope you have enjoyed my vlog and have more of an understanding on consumer buying behaviour as well as my own and I hope I've emphasised the impact marketing has on retailers as well as us as consumers. Thank you.